We've talked about balance in single player games before, because that tends to be a much less common topic to be discussed. Nobody tends to consider the balance of a single player game. But maybe we should talk about the elephant in the room for a little while, balance in multiplayer games. Because this is the good stuff, it's the juicy topic that everyone has an opinion on, and everyone has complained about it once or twice or a million times in their lives, right? Balance in a multiplayer game is one of the most important things that someone has to consider, because a game being unbalanced can be disastrous for a game. The game will instantly become unfun if something's too strong. Players feel forced into abusing the overpowered strategy along with everybody else, and people get punished for trying to do new and creative things because they're objectively less powerful than everything else. Something being underpowered is equally as frustrating because players are incentivized to not use it. A character might have super cool visuals, a really cool playstyle, awesome lore, and a really interesting kit, but if they're objectively weaker than everybody else, you feel bad for playing them, despite how well designed they might be, and despite how fun they might be. But balance in a game is super demanding. Most popular games get patched very regularly. League of Legends has more than 200 balance patches over the last 10 years, but every time they change anything, all of the cogs in the balance machine get changed along with it. Simply nerfing a powerful champion's damage numbers will affect the viability of dozens of other champions, and when other stuff becomes viable, other stuff becomes too powerful. Because none of this stuff exists in a vacuum. Balance is all relative. Samira is only too powerful in relation to everybody else. But if everybody else had a similarly overloaded kit that could block abilities for some reason, then Samira wouldn't be overpowered. She would be completely balanced. It's her strength in relation to the cast of over 150 champions around her that makes her too strong. But the community, for the most part, is in agreement that she's too strong, so developers have to do something about it. So let's crack open the list of all of the things that they could potentially change about Samira. You could change the damage that her Q does. Maybe you lower the base damage, or maybe you lower the damage it deals with items. It's scaling damage, because those two changes will have very different effects on the character. You could also make the ability have a longer cooldown. You could maybe give it a shorter range or something. You could change the damage on her W, the base damage or the scaling damage, or you could increase its cooldown, or you could make it faster, or you could make it not destroy projectiles, because why does it destroy projectiles? It doesn't make any sense. Her E is a dash that could definitely be shorter range than it currently is. Maybe you increase its cooldown, maybe you make it deal less damage. Her ult is a really stupid ability that you could maybe remove from the game or something. Then there's base stats. Every single champion in the game has base stats. Everyone starts with a certain amount of move speed, certain amount of health, certain amount of AD and stuff like that. And everyone's stats naturally scale based on their levels. Some champion's base stats scale more than others. Every single one of these numbers affects the viability of a champion. Some change it a little bit, and some change it a lot. Same goes for all of her abilities. Some changes would completely nuke the champion's viability, and some changes wouldn't really make a difference. And you have to figure out how to make her weaker, but not too much weaker, so that she's in line with every other champion in the game. It's really complicated, isn't it? Now we repeat that for the other 152 champions in League of Legends, and suddenly it's looking pretty daunting to balance League of Legends. And every time they add a new champion, it throws every single tiny cog in the machine out of whack, and it needs to be fixed as soon as possible, or else players will start quitting the game. And that's not even mentioning items, which just got reworked by the way, adding more complexity to the issue. Every single multiplayer game has these same issues. League of Legends is a particularly complex example, but every single game has balance challenges that need to be overcome. FPS games have to juggle the amount of damage certain guns do, their fire rates and their accuracy and stuff like that. Maybe there are unique characters with specific abilities that all need balancing around each other. Characters in fighting games all have unique move sets. Each move they have will deal differing amounts of damage, will have varying sizes of hitbox, will have varying speeds, and will be stronger in some situations than others. Card games have to take randomness into consideration, because a single card in your deck can single-handedly win you the game if you draw it on turn two, but if you draw it too late, that card's win rate plummets into the floor. Once again, a character, weapon, or ability's viability will be directly influenced by the viability of everything else around it. 
Some characters have winning matchups into others, so if you main Ken, the viability of Ken is going to be directly related to the viability of characters like Guile or Akuma, because those characters have favoured matchups into you. A game's balance hangs on a very thin thread most of the time. Tiny tweaks in the strength of something can wildly throw off the entire game's meta. Even inherent design decisions in your game can have a massive impact on the game's balance. In multiplayer games, you have hard counters and you have soft counters. A soft counter is when one character has a good matchup against another, but the character in the bad matchup isn't completely guaranteed to lose, they just have quite a hard time winning. A hard counter is the opposite of that a matchup where one character completely destroys everything that the other character wants to do, so much so that they literally can't accomplish anything. Having too much of a reliance on hard counters in your game can make it extremely stale, because if you get counterpicked, you have pretty much no chance to win unless you change characters right now. You either change characters or you lose. Soft counters end up being a much better time for the player overall, because getting counterpicked doesn't instantly put you out of the game. They still have some chance to come back. Some games have no hard counters, some have very few hard counters, and some have way too many hard counters. In some games, the core design concept is just straight up flawed and can't produce a balanced game. This is a game called Awesome Noughts, and I'm not going to talk in too much detail about it because this bad boy is getting a video all of its own for being such a mess. I got pretty good at this game and I spent way too much time playing it, and it had a number of very large balance issues that were close to unsolvable. The concept of the game is that it's a 2D platformer MOBA, and that concept is inherently flawed for a lot of reasons. The fast paced nature of a 2D platformer combined with the slow and methodical nature of a MOBA clash so hard that there's very little that can be done about some of the immense problems that existed in this game but I'm going to save that discussion for another time. All in all, game balance is extremely, extremely complicated. There's definitely countless nuances that I missed talking about, because it's completely impossible to cover all of it. But the message I want to leave on is this. Be nice to game developers. I know everyone likes to mock the balance teams that work on their favourite game, but this stuff is so unbelievably complicated that the task they have is basically impossible. I know it's a lot of fun to scream 200 years at Riot employees every time they speak, but you should be nice to them. They try their hardest and it's basically impossible for them to get everything right. So just make sure to remember that next time Zoe insta-kills you from downtown. Thanks for watching.